Another diagram, because I know some may ask, well, what about English? Because we talked about Hebrew and how when Hebrew is connected together that it makes a two-dimensional symbol called a Megan star. When you take English, which is actually a cognate of Futhark ruin and you, rune stones, and you put all of that together along with even the numbers and certain key symbolism that's used in the reality, you actually get this symbol. And this is known as the monogram of English because it contains every single pattern necessary to bring forth everything from the English language and the Futhark runes. In addition, when you study occultism, you find out that this is actually the diagram of the incarnated world that most are living in now if they've taken on the English language in their mind and they, have, they don't have another variation such as their own imagination or their own ancestral tongue, etc., in order to allow them to realize that the world is much more than just this symbol. So these symbols actually become more or less embedded within our consciousness and then begin to unpack themselves. So symbols, once again, are encrypted expressions of vast states of thought. And why is that? It's because the origins of a symbol come from the oversoul and then it embeds itself and then it's left to be unpacked. And that's what we're seeing within the diagrams that were shown. Obviously, again, this is a two-dimensional symbol of something that is yet to be unpacked. And then when it's unpacked, it comes out like this. And so what governs whether or not it can be unpacked is if it's put into the consciousness. This could be collective consciousness. This could be personal consciousness. If it's put into a collective or conscious environment in order for it to completely unfold itself. So that means that if a person doesn't believe this is true, they don't believe that their words have any power, they don't believe that there's any connection to the English language and spelling or spells and magic and all that kind of stuff, then it means that it never actually generally comes to fruition what they're attempting to manifest. But we also have learned with things like the secret and those kind of systems that what you think about and what you focus on does indeed begin to manifest. But that's a light version and explanation of what's really going on. The next thing that we have to take a look at here is actually planetary geometry. And obviously I did a flat earth panel, so I'm the flat earth panel, so I'm not talking about just balls spinning around in the air. In fact, I revealed a little bit during that session that all celestial bodies, and I'll repeat that again, all celestial bodies are planets or stars which are the spirits of the celestial bodies, but moving in the deep, meaning that they're actually moving in the water of the ocean that surrounds Earth, which is pretty much infinite. And their orbits create these patterns, and these patterns are because their shapes, their tones, their vibrations, and their modes of thought. And this is how we've come to actually understand even the gods, and that's why the, the gods generally represent themselves under these symbolism. Now, there's been a big corruption between what gods are because the word God actually means the Germanic god, Gud. So in every tense, I'm going to use a term that makes it a little bit easier, which is supreme being. You are a supreme being. You are a cosmos within. And the images that I'm showing you are just small variations and, and uh, portions of what you truly are. So if you look back into the Enlightenment era, you'll find that this knowledge was already known. In this diagram, you actually see somewhat of an explosion of the cosmic bodies that are embedded within the being. Here's a chart that makes it easier to understand. I'm going to hold on that for a while and then come back to it. But it just means that all of these celestial bodies or what we call a cosmos is inside of you. So this is why you can actually create with words of power because indeed you are a supreme being and you have those tones and vibrations moving through you and you have the environment in order to create things using those tones and vibrations. So the act of creation itself is something that can be done by any being that is aware of their power. And in fact, many people have children, so they're already witnessing their form of creation of putting in their seed and allowing that seed to go into the womb and then the womb beginning to manifest a baby version or a smaller version of the adult so that it grows up to emulate the adult. Now, 
our duty as parents then would be to keep growing to the stage of the oversoul so that way our children see our growth and then also follow the route that we go and begin to grow up into their total and full potential, which is actually limitless. Now, some more proof that this embedding of our chakra centers or the celestial bodies within us. So let's talk about a couple things that are synonymous with one another. It would be our organs in our body, chakras, geometry, mandalas, mantras. So all of that is actually the full comprising of the human being. So we have a lot of power within us, and that power is yet to be manifested within many. But with this kind of knowledge, you begin to realize, hey, this all connects. It's more difficult for me to believe that this is not happening. And then I better start to think about my own personal power versus bowing down or worshiping something or believing in something external or just not doing anything with the magnificent gift that you've been given. Now here we have another ancient chart, and this chart once again shows those expressions of geometry embedded within the body. That's what's here, if you can still see it distinguished. Again, it's rather old, so it came in a parchment that was slightly damaged. But if you notice that there's a reference to the zodiac signs, as you've seen in many charts about your chakra centers, etc., and there's a reference to the geometry of the orbits of the celestial bodies. And again, that's because the seed germs that have been used in order to create the composite being that we're calling human all have in themselves specific geometry. And when we start looking at that a little bit more, we start to realize why the tones, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, or the actual mantras that are used for the chakras were so important because they actually do create these patterns. And that's why you can heal your chakras through tones and vibrations because it actually allows them to resonate. Because remember what we talked about, it's all resonance, that the reason why you have a connection with the oversoul is because there is an imprint of the oversoul inside of you and through resonance, you have that connection and that connection is very similar to magnetics. And I'll explain something very simple here. If you hold two magnets together in the attracting poles when they snap together, if you pull them apart, you can feel the force between the two. But as you pull them apart further and further, you feel less and less of that force. But it doesn't mean that force is gone. In fact, if you take one magnet and you go to the other side of the world and you still have that other magnet at your house, there is still a connection or a link between those two magnets. And in fact, there's a collect connection and link between all magnetic fields. And that's what our ancestors utilized to communicate what we call synchronicity, to harness power across the grid, which we call the ley lines, and many different things that actually come out today as geomancy. So we're gonna talk about that in just a moment, but I do wanna clarify on this chart, what you're seeing is, is you're seeing the vowels and how their, to their tone and vibration, you see the connection with those tones and vibrations and mandalas, so you understand or understand that every time you say something, a partial world is coming out of your mouth. And then deeper, even deeper, you see the connection between these patterns and your DNA. And that's why the more centered that you get into yourself, the more you begin to perfect your own consciousness, the more power and ability you have to control your destiny. And that's why this becomes so important. Like, and I'll pause for a minute here because I do have a minute and 30 and it looks like we're still, you know, we're almost 